Today I'm going to be talking about an algorithm I created to predict the 2021 Virginia governor race. Here's a spoiler alert, I predicted it pretty pretty close and I'm just going to explain how I did it. I will say that it was beginner's luck and in Virginia, the go a sitting governor cannot run for re-election. So the, what that means is a sitting governor cannot, like when a person is in power for a long time and when they run for re-election, typically constituents have personal attachment to the person. So let's say there's a democratic governor and he runs for re-election. Typically some conservative folks in the state would be likely to vote for that per like democratic governor because they have personal attachment because that's just how human psychology works. That's a better way to put it. And because there's not, the incumbency factor isn't there. It's a good way of putting it is there's few variables affecting the data. It's much easier to predict because if there are like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 variables influencing the outcome, it's kind of hard to make a prediction. The less variables there are, the better the prediction you can make. And because Virginia's election system is made in a way where governors cannot run for re-election, it makes my job predicting it easier and that's why I got lucky. So first of all, what is a function? A function is when you input something, some calculations happen, and an output is created. So that's all you need to know. I created an example and stuff, but I, I think it's a bit overkill. So what I did was, I could I could have used polling data, but I did not agree with using polling data because when President Trump was running for election in 2016 and 2020, both times like polling data was like way off. Like a lot of people couldn't have predicted his win in 2016. And a lot of people overestimated how much he would lose by. And he actually was pretty close to winning. So that's just something I want to point out. And which is why I was re reluctant to use polling data. And if I don't have polling data, how else can I make a prediction? I thought, why not actually using past election data? Elect if someone comes out to the polls and vote, that's a good way of knowing if they're gonna come into the future and vote. Like if each election, 200 more Republicans or 200 more Demo 200,000 more Democrats are coming and voting, it's, if they're consistently increasing by that amount, it's easier to predict how much they will increase by in the future. So that's why I wanted to predict it using a data-driven method. So using the input-output, model i wanted to like first predict population growth and then this past data on population and what i'm essentially doing is i'm the x-axis i'm going to input the year into this function input input year and then the output should be some population in the state of virginia and by using past data i will create an algorithm this middle part so then when I input future years, like 2025, 2030, it should give me a fairly accurate, it doesn't have to be precise, but somewhat ballpark estimate of the future population. So that was what this, the purpose of this was. And then based on this, the future population, modeling the future population, this is, an, I created a new fun, uh, function where the input itself, let me, make it better where the input itself is the population in the earlier graph the output was the population now i'm using the output to create a new function and using the output population as the input and the output of that function is the votes for each party so even in some states like like virginia it's been becoming increasingly democratic in the past few years while it's becoming more Democratic votes, Democrats are winning more, that doesn't necessarily mean Republican support is going away. It just means that Republican support is not gaining as much as the Democratic side. There will be more people, there, there's a lot of people who are getting older and more conservative in Virginia. That's why it's, you, even though Virginia is becoming more liberal, it doesn't necessarily mean there will be less Republican votes. And Which is why in this graph you can see that as the population of Virginia grows, so does 
the number of Republican votes, and so does Democrats. It's just that Democrat votes are just growing at a faster pace. That's why they tend to win elections more. And I forgot to mention this equation earlier, earlier, y equals mx plus b. That's a equation for graphing a line, which you like learned in um, a standard uh, ninth grade algebra class. Most people would learn it then, at least that's when I learned it. And I decided to use that basic concept for predicting, for creating this algorithm. And essentially this x is an input you input the x, and then the rest of the equation, m and b, is this big brain stuff, and then the y is the output. Essentially, we're trying to create an equation because if you can create an equation for it, you can input any value you want. You can input data from the 1990, or you can make future data in like 2030 and predict the future output. That's the beauty of having an equation. It's, it's much more easier to work with the data to make predictions or to analyze past data and such. So I just simply made, based on the population, I made an analysis of how the votes would correlate and using the past algorithm where we would predict the future population. If we can predict the future population, we can input the future population and use this algorithm to predict future votes. That's essentially what I'm doing here. And after doing that, let me, I don't want to spoil too much, but let me try to hide this. But what I essentially did was um, I included a two variable equation, where I in, as I've said earlier, and this predicted Terry McAuliffe, the Democrat winning by 6%. And if I had made this algorithm, like I made this like right before the election, and if I had made this algorithm like six months in advance, when like the Democrat was expected to win, I probably would have been when said, that's a pretty good estimate. Now let's end it there. But because um, I was hearing on the news a lot that the election seemed to be getting closer, I got a little biased and decided to add another factor to it. It's important to note that um, when I created this like graph, I included there's something in politics, there's something called a red wave and a blue wave. When there's a Democratic president, Democrats would be less inclined to vote and Republicans would be more motivated to come out and vote in congressional and in governor races. And that's so if essentially whichever this party is that's ruling in Congress or in the president has a White House, the opposite party would perform well in midterm type elections. So. What I did for this graph was I used equal amounts of red waves and blue waves, equal amount of elections where Republicans were favored to win, and equal amount of um, election data where Democrats were favored to win. So that way, this graph would not necessarily favor one party. This would be biased. And that means essentially if I were to just hold an election on a random day and there was no party necessarily influencing the election at a greater extent, Terry McAuliffe would win by 6%. But here's the thing. Joe Biden did not have a good um, approval rating. Even if he did have a good approval rating, Democrats wouldn't come out and vote as much as Republicans. And there's always that factor. That means that there's a red wave this 2021 cycle. That's what I thought. So I decided to add... Uh, an extra variable to this algorithm called where I factored in a Republican red wave to predict who would win. So what I essentially did was, um, if you remember the algorithm for predicting party votes, you could use it to predict past party, future party votes, which we did and gave Terry McAuliffe a 6% victory, or you could rerun it in the past. What does that mean? So, like, let's say, um, let me get a new piece of paper and kind of explain what I'm saying. So, essentially, we can test the accuracy of my algorithm because it's unbiased and it predicts who would win without any, like, influence of a red wave or blue wave. We could test the average accuracy of the algorithm and 
shifted, if that makes sense. So, like, let's say, um, 2000, there's an election in 2000, there's an election in 2005, 2010, 2015. These are the years, okay? And, and imagine the actual votes, and these are the algorithm votes. See, the algorithm doesn't really know past, present, future. All it is is just inputting something and getting an output. So in that case, it doesn't really matter if we plug in to the year 2000 into this if we plug in um, the population at 2000 to make a prediction of the votes at that election. So like, let's say Democrats were prepared to get 200K votes, but they actually got 250K. And then like in 2005, if I, let's say, had this algorithm in the past and I predicted it, and like I got 250K prediction and the actual votes was 290K. And then in 2009, the algorithm predicted let's say 320k votes and then the actual votes were like 390k as you can see here the algorithm is consistently underestimating the votes it's consistently off by like 50k ish votes 50 to 60k somewhere in that ball pay, ballpark range and that's essentially what i was doing here with the correction algorithm i was just per based on the predicted votes i ran the algorithm back in time against the actual votes to see how off it was and I ran a linear regression algorithm on it to create an, an, uh, another y equal to mx plus b equation to change it. So essentially, uh, based on my past um, algorithm votes, the algorithm votes, the predicted algorithm vote past the algorithm which I just showed earlier, I would input that and then this random mx plus b, the big brain stuff, that would happen and it would somehow correct it in some way, and the output would be the corrected votes, which accounts for a Republican red wave. That's essentially what I did. And I would note by saying that I did all of this on Excel, using the linear regression trend stuff in Excel. And I wanted to code it and stuff, but honestly, you don't need to like use coding and stuff. You can like do a lot of data analysis on Excel or Google Sheets, and that's more than you need. Using coding is more efficient when you're dealing with big data and you need to make big trends and you don't have the time to simply click and scroll through thousands of columns and doing stuff. So after doing all of this, let me see my graph. I added a new part where I corrected, corrected the 6% to um, account for a red wave and I predicted uh, Glenn Youngkin, the Republican, winning by 1.85% and in the general election, the actual result, he won by 2%, so 1.5% error. So I will say that I think I'm fairly accurate. I think I did a good job, but I will say that um, I think it's beginner's luck. I did run the algorithm for the, the exact same algorithm for the New Jersey governor race. And then I predicted a the Republican winning by 20 points, which doesn't make sense because that's such a blue state. And if I didn't, and that was when I accounted for a red wave, but if I didn't account for a red wave and just included th these two variables, I predicted a uh, Democrat victory by one point and the Democrat there and ended up winning by three points. So again, I think when creating such an algorithm, you can't create a generalized algorithm for all 50 states or or wherever you're from, you you really have to go at it by a case by a case basis and make logical decisions to make a truly accurate algorithm. I hope you enjoyed my long um, rant. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for tuning in. It really means a lot. Please comment. Um, I spend a lot of time doing this. Like, I created pictures for this. I tried to create like a stop motion of it where like. I would create a box individually and write it. Stop motions take a long, long time. And I spent all that time when I did, went to do like video edit it. I had problems with video editing it, editing it because stuff happened. It's hard to explain. And now uh, it's, I spent like over like three hours trying, three or four hours trying to do it. It didn't work out. So please comment, please support me in any way you see fit. Thank you. Bye.